Sam is all he lives for. That's truly the only thing he, he cares about in this world, and that's what's keeping him going. Welcome back to the chat with us. We're here in studio with fandoms Emma Fife. Chris is back in Florida, and we are here to talk about episode five, which is the Henry and Sam episode. So much happens. <laughs> These characters of Henry and Sam, they both exist within the video game, and their circumstances are similar. The city's different. They're in Pittsburgh, not in Kansas City. And basically, in this show, they have given them a more personal connection to what's going on. We also find out a little bit more about the politics of Kansas City. I think it was not super clear in episode four of, like, sort of who Kathleen was, how she came to power, and we get a lot more oh. of those answers. At first, we have some questions about Henry, because he has been labeled a collaborator, so he was helping the corrupt Fedra. He turned in Kathleen's brother in order to get leukemia medication for Sam. I am the bad guy because I did a bad guy thing. And he's like obviously still dealing with a lot of guilt over whether that was the right thing to do. He idolized Kathleen's brother, but his little brother needed leukemia meds. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a hot take right now. <laughs> yeah, it's okay to do that. Yeah, if my brother, I mean, if my brother was dying from cancer and like, look, I would have to tell you, I like, look, this is my only choice. Yes. My brother's gonna die. Yes. So like run. Yeah. Run now. And that's one of the things where I think this series has been extremely successful in terms of adaptation is that it really embraces the theme of the game and explores it through these secondary characters. In the case of Kathleen, it was super interesting because you basically have these two parallel characters in Henry and Kathleen, both of whom are doing anything that needs to be done for the sake of their brother. I know why you did what you did. She's actually been successful in making change because she's making these hard, ruthless decisions. So in a lot of ways, Henry really is making choices that are just as brutal as Kathleen is. We're just seeing the mm -hmm. fallout with Kathleen. Meanwhile, Henry's already made his brutal choice. I feel like one of the themes of the show thus far is as Joel and Ellie are getting to know each other, we're getting to explore all these different versions of love in this mm -hmm. post-apocalyptic world. Obviously, we had Frank and Bill, but then we have Henry and Sam, but we also have Kathleen and her brother, who she expresses her love and mourning her brother in a very aggressive, violent way, but it's still love. It and is, love. and and also we learn through Kathleen's dialogue that her brother was effectively doing for her exactly what Henry is doing for Sam. TV guys, Cat Moon talked to Lamar Johnson, who plays Henry in the episode, uh, and asked him specifically about making that choice of turning in Kathleen's brother uh, and where he finds Henry to be on the morality scale. So let's see what he had to say about that. You know, it's it's really about survival, you know, and really just saving and just being connected and being as close as the people that you love as possible because you never know what's going to happen. So me making that decision to, I guess, save my brother, it was obviously a tough decision, but would I make that again? Yes, if it meant to protect my brother and to save his life, you know, because that's, I mean, he's what I live for. I was willing to do, you know, whatever it took um, in order for me to, to make sure that he was protected and that he was safe. So I think it's interesting in like comparing Henry to Kathleen, I think in her final confrontation. Kids die, Henry, they die all the time. Why did you think it was okay to save your brother? This is what happens when you we're not allowed to mess with fate. I don't think she would have the gumption to overturn Fedra if it wasn't for Henry kill, like being responsible for the death of her brother. I just felt like that speech was was so great in the lack of self-awareness that she had. You think he's worth everything? She's been and so single-minded in her pursuit of Henry She's not actually focused on things the resistance needs to be paying attention to. Just a note, if you are ever in an apocalypse situation, if you see the ground breathing, <laughs> reorder your priorities. Yeah, that, that that's might what I learned be, from this episode. Yeah. It is really interesting that literally none of this would have happened if he hadn't have killed her brother. It's one of those butterfly effect situations where like, just that one thing changed the entire course of this city. There is what is formally called a bloater. Yes. I have learned, but I refer to him as big boy. Yeah. I mean, that's what they are. Yeah, I think that's a better name. It's a yeah, better name. A but boy. yeah, bloaters basically are infected that have been infected for a very long time. 
they, like clickers, are pretty blind. I think we should check back in with Lamar, who was there on the day that they filmed the scene, got to see Big Boy in person, uh, and he broke down what it was like and sort of how they they set up that magnificent action shot. There were so many practical effects. So a lot of what you're seeing is actually there. Even when the card sinks, like when they're coming out of the floor, there were maybe 70 extras all in makeup, like, that was very much real. Watching all that happen and all the stunts and all this kind of, you know, choreographing with the cameras, us running through all this kind of stuff is happening, all the craziness, us being under the car, like all of that stuff was real. They had a guy in a suit. I don't know what CGI they might have added to that makeup, but the makeup on the day, which you're looking at it, it, it truly looks incredible. I knew that as soon as the episode didn't end, with them leaving Kathleen's yeah. decrepit body, that I was like, nothing good can come from whatever is left of this episode. We find out Sam got bit. For Ellie to have that moment of going, I know that I'm immune and they're trying to get me out west to create a cure, basically. What if my blood is just the answer? I knew it wasn't gonna end well, but oh, I, no. was, I was there like, what if it does? Like I had that like little shred of hope, and I think like See? the extra bit that just like made it even extra devastating was how they shot him sitting on the end of the bed oh, when she wakes up in the morning, and you're yeah. like, maybe it works. <laughs> it gets worse. Oh to you. God. <laughs> uh, they for a hot out. second I forgot that it gets worse. <laughs> oh yeah, it oh, gets no. worse. Your brain is trying to protect you. They tussle out into the main motel room. Joel is too slow to grab the gun. Mm -hmm. Henry is the first one to grab it. And he, at first he's trying to stop Joel from doing yeah. anything. And then just out of instinct, he shoots Sam in the <sighs> head. And it's horror. Like there's so many layers to how horrifying that moment is. And then in the grief, mm. once he like processes what he's done, he then takes his own life. It's so hard to watch. Uh, another very slight sort of tweak from the game here is the final things that Henry says to Joel. It's all your fault. So in the game, he like blames Joel for what happened. And that was not apparent at all mm -hmm. in the show. It was very much a, like you said, like you really felt like he shot him out of instinct. It wasn't even like he made the choice. He just did it because that's what you do. What did I do? It's those things that I love that they're doing to tweak yeah. the show to make it just a little bit different from the game because we don't have that gameplay mechanic to keep yeah. us engaged. So instead, they're taking a sledgehammer to our hearts yeah. and over and over again every single week. We talked to Lamar uh, and he he gave us Oof. a big breakdown of that entire final sequence and what was going and what it was like to film that heart wrenching sequence. Sam is all he lives for. That's truly the only thing he, he cares about in this world. And that's what's keeping him going. And when Sam is gone, you know, who does he have to live for? You know, this world is already tough as it is. Losing someone that, that you've you fought and you've sacrificed so much for, it's tough to see them gone. He also, you know, believes in, in a higher power. And he believes that, you know, in, in this moment, he wanted to join his brother. You know, he wanted to join his brother. He couldn't live and stomach with the idea and the fact of living without him, you know, after everything he's already sacrificed to keep him safe. And I think, you know, at that moment, he kind of also tells himself, all right, well, I think it's it's time. It's my time as well. It goes back to the fact that like, none of it would have happened if it wasn't for Kathleen. And the fact that this like power hungry white woman led to this, like her name is Kathleen. We're just like, we're a few letters away from Karen. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I'm just gonna. Oh say my it. god! If her name, like, I, I, I understand that Karen would have been two on the nose. <laughs> two on yeah. the nose. What I found really striking about the end of the episode was Joel and Ellie dig the graves and bury them. She writes a note to Sam that says, "I'm sorry" on the pad, and then she walks away. And Joel is the one that's mm -hmm. like, I know. "Can we like take a minute? Can we like?" Pro and she's like, "No, I'm done." And you kind of see him realizing that what happened to him is happening to her. Yes. And it's like his yes. worst nightmare in his head of like everything that he tried to protect her from when they first got to Kansas City has happened. Let's go. It's exactly what happened mm -hmm. with Tess's death except it's in reverse. Joel was the one that was like, we're going, never bring up Tess again. And now yeah. the roles are flipped here of Ellie being like, okay, it's time to move on. And I think to see that in her has to be startling and has to be like 
horrifying. Lamar had a, a message for all of the fans out there who might be struggling with how to cope after this episode. And I think what he had to say was really beautiful. You know, I think with Sam and Henry, I think they showcase what this world is like for, I guess, maybe a brother, you know, a brother sibling kind of dynamic, just another exploration of love. Even though, you know, we're, we're in a world and in an environment that is so um, harsh, I think really there's a really big underlying uh, message of love, you know, that is, is through every single story. So I think if we're able to make you feel anything um, and also to make you feel our connection, the love that we had for each other, um, I think is very powerful. On that note, I want to keep it positive in here, kind of. Oh, I know what we should do. <laughs> what should we do? Oh, Megan, you hate horror. What was the Megan's nightmare scene of the week? This little we watched could, this episode together. We did. And this little contortionist, I don't, is she a clicker? Whatever, that monster that climbs in the van with Ellie while they're while the zombies are swarming everywhere. I hate her. She represents everything that I hate in the world about like my again, we've talked about it. My like top number one fear is Samara from the ring. <laughs> to see this child do the bendy thing was deeply unsettling. That little girl made the bloater look downright adorable. Yeah. Like, I'm not scared of the bloater at all. I'm scared of the thing that can bend backwards yeah. and crab walk. The bloater is now life goals. I love that dude. He's awesome. <laughs> she is the one that takes out Kathleen. So like, at least there's that, oh. but like it doesn't justify <laughs> the contort. The wow, contort. so okay. even even taking out Kathleen didn't win you didn't over. Didn't save her. No, you. Okay. there was a, she didn't need to contort to do any of it. Don't worry, sweetie. You're gonna be okay. I yes. believe it is also time for Ellie's <sighs> curse of the week. This is your favorite part of every episode. Yeah, buddy. It happens at the top of the episode when Henry and Sam confront Joel and Ellie. Henry wants to make some sort of deal with Joel that like, how about we don't shoot each other? And Joel very flippantly says, oh, okay. And he's like, well, I don't trust you. And Ellie pipes in like, that's just the way he sounds. He has an asshole voice. Joel, tell him he's okay. And honest to God, that that is such a perfect line because also she's right. Also, like as a woman who has to contend with like resting face for there to be like like a male equivalent. And that I, yes, thank you, Ellie. Mm -hmm. A service yeah. to us all. Mm -hmm. So we are back on the road again, looking forward to episode six. I want to know sort of what what do we need after this episode besides like a soul cleanse? You know what I mean? Like, obviously, I need humor again. I need to believe yep. in, yeah. in in life and <laughs> that there is a reason to continue after this episode. Well, if I could make a request, I would love for Ellie's joke book to come back because, like you say, we need that levity. You can't escape Will Livingston. He'll be back. Wouldn't we like to see Tommy again? I'd like I to see a happy family reunion. I think that'd be nice. Look, you don't cast Gabriel Luna just to write him off after half an episode of no. television. Duh. I'm, we will absolutely see Tommy again at some point. I'll find a way. This has been episode five of The Chat With Us. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks to Emma for join, from Fandom joining us in the studio. Chris from Florida. Join us next week uh, when we break down episode six.